I'm a pretty avid reader and I love all different types and genres of books. I also really enjoy a lot of different shows, but I think that some of the best stories that are told are the ones that not only have good foreshadowing, but also great callbacks. The moments throughout that towards the end of the story, it brings something to mind that happened earlier on that helps clarify what's going on or what's being said. John does just that in his writing. He gives us clues of not only what's to come, but also reminds us of key things and key moments in the Old Testament that helps make this writing so much more rich and satisfying. When John brings us to Jesus on the cross, we should keep that in mind. So when Jesus says, I'm thirsty, it should remind us about how he turned water into wine and how he says that he is living water. But how is he thirsty? And what does that mean exactly? Well, this is a callback that reminds us and shows us that Jesus had to come to a place that everybody else does, a place of thirst, a place of shame, and even death in order to complete the work that was set before him. When Jesus cries out, it is finished, we should ask ourselves, what exactly is finished? So far in our journey, we have seen six miracles, six instances where Jesus is showing us what it would be like in the new kingdom in bringing the new creation and the new world about. Within Genesis 1, John would have had in mind the seven days of creation, how there were six days of formation and creation before the seventh day of rest. This helps our minds go back to that moment, go back to the very beginning and shows us that Jesus is in fact completing a work, completing a new creation. And this had to happen in what he did. He had to complete this work, the work that the Father sent him to do. He is loved to the very end, giving up his very own life, just as we were told it would happen. Jesus' work is now complete, and it's upon that finished, complete work that people from that day on stake their belief and faith in Jesus Christ. Without this work, we would not have what comes next, and both his death on the cross and the resurrection are key moments in which we stake our faith and belief in Jesus Christ. The evidence is in the work that is finished. And it's on this work, upon this evidence, that you can choose to stake your life. My challenge to you is to stake your belief in Jesus upon this, the facts, the evidence, the truth. We don't stake our faith upon people, but upon Jesus and the work that he has completed.